is Catherine, and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about my backlist TBR for 2021. These are the books that were written before 2021, even I think most of them are before 2020, that have been on my shelves for a while and I would really like to get to this year. So the very first book on this list is Refuge by Dina Nairi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, um, but this book has been on my shelves for probably three or four years at this point. I originally picked it up based on one of Joss from Squibbles Reads videos. It just sounded amazing. I got it from Book Outlet before they were problematic, <laughs> before we knew they were problematic. Um, very cheaply so I wanted to give it a try and it's just been sitting on my shelves for really no good reason. So this book is about an Iranian girl who leaves Iran to come to America when she's very young but her father stays behind and this book kind of catalogs how she changes and how their relationship changes over the course of 20 years and four face-to-face -face meetings. This appeals to me for a number of reasons it's about the immigrant experience in America, and it's about a father-daughter relationship, and those things really interest me. I love reading about family relationships and dynamics, so I would really like to get to this one this year. I have a feeling if I don't get to it, it might be time to get rid of it because it's been sitting on my shelves for so long, so I'm gonna get to it. The second book on my list is The Old Drift by Namwali Serpel. Again, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, this book has also been on my shelves for probably two or three years at this point. Um, I picked it up after hearing it was an African fantasy. I don't know how true that actually is, um, but I knew I had to have it when I saw the cover because the cover is absolutely beautiful. The spine is beautiful. The back, everything. It's so colorful. I love it. <laughs> so I picked it up and I don't usually buy books because of the cover. I will say that. So this book is about three um, Zambian families and four generations from those families. I really want to read to you what's on the inside pamphlet of this book because it is really what intrigued me after, of course, the beautiful cover. So it says, the tale a playful panorama of history, fairy tale, romance, and science fiction. The moral? To err is human. Um, I feel like that's enough <laughs> for me to want to pick this one up. Um, I don't know how fantastical it'll be. I don't know really what genre it's going to fit in at all, but it's a family story and I'm really excited about it. And I've been also really into reading books set in Africa. so. This should be a really good one. The next book on this list is Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This is a book that I've heard so much about, particularly on some book podcasts that I listen to. I've just been told it tugs at your heartstrings, it's very emotional, and everyone says that it's absolutely worth the read. This book is basically about the life of one man who was adopted when he was very young who doesn't know his birth mother and just about how he grows up. Um, it takes place in the 1940s all the way up to approximately present day. Um, and like I said, I've been told that it's very emotional and you better have a box of tissues by your side. And honestly, if you tell me that, it really makes me want to read the book. <laughs> so so <laughs> this was published in 2017, so it's not too old. Um, but it has been on my shelf for a year or two and I really want to get to it. So that's why it's on this list. The next book on this list is Stay With Me by Ayobami Adebayo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said that one correctly. Um, this is a book that made its way around the internet, um, at least a little bit, I think. Um, a couple of years ago and again I was told that it was beautiful and emotional and it takes place in Africa so definitely high up on my list. 
Um, it's about a woman and her husband and the woman is not able to conceive. So the husband is urged by his family to take on a second wife. Um, and if I remember correctly, um, both the husband and the first wife are kind of against this idea. So this is actually a pretty short, pretty thin um, book, but I've heard it packs a punch and I am very excited to try and get to this this year, probably sooner rather than later because it is so short. Um, it's not very intimidating and I would really, really like to get to it. So the next book, um, I don't have a physical copy. I have a copy on my Kindle, um, but that is The Priority of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. It's a standalone fantasy book that I've heard really mixed things about, honestly. I know it has dragons. I know it has a lot of political intrigue. Um, I also know that maybe the fighting and battle scenes aren't written the best, but I don't really care. I want to try it. I want to see for myself if I like it or not. Um, so I picked it up on a Kindle deal for very cheap. Thought I would try it out. We'll see if I get to it. Honestly, there's a lot of big fantasy books that I would like to read. I tend to forget about it because it's just sitting on my Kindle, but I would like to get to it. I would really like to form my own opinion of it because I've heard so many mixed reviews from people that I trust. So we'll see. And the next book I also do not have a physical copy of. I don't even have a digital copy yet. Um, we'll see how I decide to pick it up, but I have heard so many great things about Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Uh, it's considered a classic. Um, I've been told that it's one of the easier classics to start with. I'm not a big classics reader, um, but I did read, I read it on my Kindle, I did read Mexican Gothic this year and I know, I know that's certainly not a classic but it is kind of gothic Victorian feel and that's exactly what Rebecca is and I loved Mexican Gothic. So knowing that the vibe between those two books is very similar I would really like to give it a try. Everyone says that Daphne du Maurier is a brilliant writer so I would love to check it out and I should be able to get my hands on a copy very easily. And the final book on this list is The Dearly Beloved by Carol Wall. So this was a book that I originally heard about again on a podcast and it really intrigued me because it's about kind of religion and belief in God and how different people, different characters in the book um, believe or don't believe and how they came to those opinions and thoughts and beliefs. That sounded amazing to me. Um, I love books that explore religion and belief and God. So I picked it up. Then it was picked by Jenna Bush, I believe, for her book club. And it got a ton of hype after that. Um, the hype kind of killed my desire to get to this book. I just felt like it was so hyped that I was going to end up being disappointed. And I had already kind of hyped it up to myself. Um, so it just kind of killed my desire to pick this up. Um, but now that it's out of the spotlight, I think I can pick this up again. Um, I'm still really excited about it and the themes that it explores. So I need to just stop being silly and read it. So those are the, what, six or seven books on my backlist TBR for 2021. I didn't want it to be a huge list. As I said in my previous video, I really only read 50, hopefully 60 books a year. So I, I didn't want to load up this list, but I did want to mention some of the books that have been on my shelf or just on my mind for a really long time and, and who deserve to finally be read. Thank you so much for joining me. I will have all the books that I talked about listed in the description box. Thank you for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.